Cadet Major Zayla Dort. And I'm Cadet First Lieutenant Kayla Carlino. And we're all members of Gloucester High School's Marine Corps JROTC program. We celebrate this day, the 11th of November, to show our beloved service members that their efforts do not go unseen. We would like to thank all veterans and all those who are currently serving in this great nation. God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. Hoorah! Good morning. To our Gold Star families, active duty service members, members of the United States Coast Guard, veterans in your families, Senator Tarr, Representative Ferranti, Mayor Romeo Taken, Chief Connolly, members of our city council, members of our school committee, members of our fire and police departments, students of our schools, families and friends. I would like to thank you for watching with us today to honor our military veterans on this Veterans Day, Wednesday, November 11th, 2020. This year's Veterans Day is unlike any other, as our nation continues to grapple with the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today should be a day where we gather together to show our appreciation for the men and women who have selflessly served our nation. We have an obligation and a duty to remind our veterans community that we, the community of Gloucester, thank and appreciate them for their service. On November 11th, 1919, President Woodrow Wilson declared the day Armistice Day to mark the end of hostilities between allied nations and Germany during the war to end all wars, World War I, which went into effect on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. Unfortunately, this utopian idea did not remain. And in 1954, President Dwight D. Eisenhower declared November 11th Veterans Day in honor to the continued service and sacrifice of so many American men and women. Today, across our great nation, communities continue to honor the 20 million veterans who have sworn an oath to defend our great nation in times of war and in times of peace. Today, we, the community of Gloucester, gather to thank and show our support to over 1,600 veterans that call our beloved city home. And we thank our active duty components right here in Gloucester, the United States Coast Guard. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance led by Keisha Kukuru of the Gloucester High School Marine Corps JROTC and Jaden Ciparini of the David G. Ouellette Gloucester Sea Cadets. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and no justice for all. Please remain standing for our national anthem the Star Spangled Banner, performed by Alexandra Grace. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars
Thank you. Please be seated. Chaplain of the Gloucester American Legion, Post 3, Paul Kruger will give the invocation. Let us pray for our veterans. Let us remember both their sacrifices in their service. We are justly proud of them. Let us pray for those homegrown heroes, those that served on the front lines where fear and fate intersected. Let us pray for those veterans who served in hospitals, classrooms, and offices. Let us pray for those veterans who served in staffed embassies, who guided our leaders. To the Creator we pray, please embrace those veterans that have passed into your realm. Please give them both comfort and rest. Amen. We now have the pleasure of introducing an avid supporter of our veterans in the Office of Veterans Services. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Mayor of the City of Gloucester, the Honorable Safathia Romeo Takem. Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today to honor our heroes by celebrating Veterans Day. Even though you're not out here, I know you are here in spirit. And I'm thanking all of you who put this together. Adam, V, thank you. It's different, it's COVID time, and we really don't understand what's happening and why can't we gather just a few. But let me tell you something. I know we're all here in spirit. I know we're always together because you do have good veterans office. When the city of Gloucester hired Adam Kukuru, we knew what we were doing. I wasn't mayor, I was the ONA, and I knew he belonged there. When they asked that he needs an assistant and they said we needed V, I knew she was the right person. And I knew together they would perform a team that would be remarkable and our veterans would be served. Not only are the Gloucester veterans served, but expanded to Cape Ann. We wanted to make sure all veterans were taken care of and had a voice. So I thank you both. We honor all of those who have taken and given back to the country. I know we couldn't be standing here without our servicemen and women, and we must always remember the real, the very difficult sacrifices our veterans and their families have made over the years to provide for this country especially our freedom. Our debt to these heroes can never be repaid and our gratitude and respectful must last forever. For many veterans throughout Cape Ann and across our nation, the call to action was important enough for them to endure long separations from their families. These military families, especially spouses and children, share this responsibility. As fathers, mothers, sons and daughters, we all know that a sacrifice is made for their country in the name of honor. I know when I went to go visit my daughter when she was doing the reserve, my daughter Carla, who enrolled in the Army Reserves, and I saw the hard task and all the young children, and I called them children because they were so young. And why did they want to serve their country? When you heard what they were saying and how proud they were to serve their country, it was amazing. The freedom 
We are serving our country so you, ma'am, can have freedom now and forever, just as our past veterans served this country so I could have a choice to go into the reserves. These sacrifices our service members make and felt across so many lives in so many years, and yet the bravery continues on. But these warriors needed devotion, advocates, and this is why we expanded our veterans office, and that's why I want to thank you again. Well, we were home during this pandemic, and there were so many veterans, whether they were homeless or needed some help or couldn't get out, I knew our Cape Ann veterans office was out there. I knew they didn't give up. I knew they didn't stop. And I knew that my veterans would be taken care of. I, as a mayor, got to relax a little bit more easier. And I know that the continue will be top priority for my administration. I know that. I don't have to tell them what to do. I don't have to ask them what to do. But in my heart, it is top priority. We must always serve our veterans and their families and their commun communities because we are Cape Ann, and we are now extended to more. It's not like a veteran or, uh, the um, veteran's office said, you know, we have enough on our plate. We're taking care of Gloucester, Manchester. We're taking care of um, Rockport, and you want to expand. No, I didn't go to them. They came to me. They're saying there's too many veterans out there that don't have a voice and unheard, and we'd like to expand. And they took that upon themselves. Again, I thank you. Those who defend us from our enemies must always have a full support, and they did, and they will. We're now at Gloucester City Hall, and we have a green light that's going to be shining in the tower to let everyone know. We support our troops. We honor our veterans. Gloucester cares about our heroes. I ask that you show your support of these great men and women by hiring a veteran in your workplace, visiting the VA hospital, or donate into our veterans program. It's true. To honor, to work, Many were war heroes, advocate, family members, volunteers who need that extra help and support. Until our government can, this city will. And we must work together with our Veterans Center to help provide the best service and the best care. Because they can't do it alone. They are our heroes, but they can't do it alone. So I want to thank all the volunteers that go every day to help our veteran services. How do we treat our heroes? Respect. Remember them, talk to them. And as your mayor, I promise our veterans that I will honor your service and I will always fight for you, just like you've always fought for us and me and my family and my country. Thank you all again, and once again, enjoy this holiday and honor our veterans today. And every day, God bless our troops and God bless you all. And I today like to say I honor Adam Kukuru and V. Ciparini. I want to thank you. You make me proud. State Senator Bruce Tarr, the Senate Minority Leader, will read the Veterans Day Proclamation by Charlie Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth. Thank you very much, Adam, and good morning. I want to first begin by joining with our Mayor and I'm sure our State Representative in thanking you, Adam, and you, V for the work that you continue to do on behalf of all of the veterans on Cape Ann. I think it's particularly significant that as we gather here today with just a small group of us here at City Hall, on behalf of a large group of us in the community, we do so because our Veterans Office was not deterred by the COVID-19 <coughs> pandemic from having us come together and express a message of support for all of our veterans. It speaks to the way that our Veterans Office works every day, and that is finding a way to get the job done, whether it be recognizing our veterans in ceremonial ways or helping them in substantive ways to meet the needs that they have and to keep the promises that we collectively have made as the federal and state government to support those who support us by serving our country. As we've not been deterred from joining today to commemorate Veterans Day, nor has our governor and our lieutenant governor, and they've issued a proclamation which reads as follows. Whereas since the Commonwealth's colonial days, 
Thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas on November 11th, 1918, the armistice was signed in the forest of Campaign by the Allied nations and Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars after four years of conflict. And whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor veterans. And whereas there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts. And whereas today, we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country. And whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who serve their country so that their sacrifice and dedication serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. And whereas in November 2019, the world will commemorate the uh, 101st anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. And we did that last year at this time. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2020 to be Veterans Day and urge all of the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Thanks to our Veterans Office and Adam and V, we are participating fittingly in this observance given the challenging times that we face. And I would encourage us all to think about what that means in our own lives. As we endure the rigors and the challenges and the hardships of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are experiencing just some of the things that the people who have served and do serve our country have faced and continue to face. Separation from family, disruption from the normal course of our lives, isolation, pain, difficulty among those around us with wounds and injuries, and in this case, the suffering that comes from a terrible virus. Those things are not new to our veterans, but it's incumbent on all of us to remember that they have endured them because they have had unity of purpose and belief in these United States. Now, more than ever, it's time to prove our unity as Americans in support of them and in support of this great nation. So no matter what our differences may be, and no matter where we may find ourselves in the midst of this pandemic, my hope is that we'll all find that unity of purpose that will be worthy of their sacrifice by the way that we live our lives in dedication to the common ideals of this country, and that we will address the things that we can do something about. For Representative Ferrante and I, that means working on legislation to support our veterans, and the legislature is continuing to work on that legislation right now. But for all of us, it might mean a phone call to a veteran that we're thinking about. Maybe we can't visit in person. It might mean a letter to someone here or far away to say that you're in our thoughts and you're in our heart. It might mean an email message to say that on this Veterans Day and every day, I'm thinking about you and I support you. Just as the men and women that serve our country have always found a way forward, we need collectively in these challenging and all too often divisive times to find our way forward. And that way forward must include supporting the men and women of our armed services and honoring their legacy. May God bless them and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Please welcome State Representative of the 5th Essex District, Ann Margaret Ferranti.
Thank you, Adam. And it's always difficult to follow the mayor and Senator Tarr. They have made a lot of comments today, and I, I support everything that they've said, and I don't want to repeat it. So I'm going to take a little bit of a different track here. And what they said and what they talked about is Veterans Day through the spectrum of support for our veterans, which I wholeheartedly agree on, and honoring our veterans, which again, I wholeheartedly agree on. Last night, when I was preparing for coming here today to speak to all of you, I prepared by reading poems that were written by veterans. And there was one poem, and I actually brought it with me today, but of course it disappeared somewhere in my pockets and my belongings, and that's okay, because I think sometimes it's better just to speak from the heart and from that inspiration rather than to read during a speech. But what the poem said is that Veterans Day is a celebration, that it's good to think about the support, it's good to think and honor our veterans, but that a lot of times we miss the celebratory part of Veterans Day. And the celebratory part of Veterans Day is this. V, I was very moved by the speech that you gave a couple of Veterans Day uh, ceremonies past. Adam, I remember your ceremony for the Purple Heart, and I remember it so well because I had a tooth extracted that day and ran over here just in time to witness it. And Chief Connolly, I know we're going to hear your remarks today. And in each of your remarks, you talked about, or I heard about, how your life was threatened, how you came under fire and had the courage to overcome it. And not only did you have the courage to overcome it and to survive, but you helped others survive, and you made it back. And we should celebrate that today. Today, we should celebrate the fact that courageous young men and women have left our country, have gone into battle, have gone in knowing that they might not make it back. And yet they did, whether it was through the actions of comrades, whether it was through their own courage, whether it was through the grace of God, you made it back. And so today, here's what I'm going to suggest. The mayor suggested the fact that we take actions if we have small businesses to hire veterans and to put them to work when they come back. Senator Tarr talked about the fact that he and I and the mayor work together very diligently to pass legislation that will benefit veterans and to help make them whole and to fill that sacrifice and that void that occurred when they went overseas to take care of them when they come back, if they come back injured. But today, here's what I'm going to recommend. Today, I recommend that we celebrate the fact that our veterans are home. They made it home with us. The fathers, the mothers, the sisters, the brothers, they made it home. Our doctors, our lawyers, our mechanics, who left to go back, they made it back. They were in combat. They secured our freedom. And let me just say this, oftentimes, and I saw this in the poem too, Oftentimes, we talk about how the United States won its freedom in 1775 or 1776 or whichever year of the Revolutionary War you want to pick. But freedom is something that's won continuously. It's not just that we won on that day a couple hundred years ago, and because of that, Americans are free. No. It's because time and time and time again, when democracy, when freedom is threatened, people respond. And they respond selflessly and they sacrifice. So today, Adam, I celebrate the fact that you're here, that you made it back, and you're with us. 
V, I celebrate the fact that you're here and you're still with us. Chief, I celebrate the fact that you made it back safely as well. And not only that you made it back and that you are well, but that you continue to serve us. Thank you for your service and we will never forget. Alexandra Grace will now perform a veteran's version of Hallelujah. You packed your bags and shut the door. You crossed the sea to fight a war. You didn't know just what would happen to you. Stepped in the dirt, boots on the ground And gunfire was the only sound And to yourself you whispered Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah Connolly was inducted into the United States Army in 1987. He completed basic infantry, airborne school, ranger indoctrination program, and ranger school. He was assigned to the 1st Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. While serving with the rangers, he participated in Operation Just Cause, conducting a nighttime parachute assault to secure airfields in Panama. Upon returning from active duty, he joined the Rhode Island National Guard. 
and served with the 173rd Long Range Surveillance Detachment until 1998. Edward Connolly has been awarded the Combat Infantry Badge, the Ranger Tab, the Army Parachute Wings with Gold Combat Star, British and Jordanian Parachute Wings, Foreign Expeditionary Medal with Arrowhead Device, Meritorious Service Medal, and the Army Commendation Medal. Edward Connolly started his law enforcement career as a Deputy Sheriff with the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department in 1992. In 1994, he was appointed to the Chelsea Police Department, where he worked as a patrol officer, detective, narcotics sergeant, and internal affairs investigator. In 2016, he was selected to be the chief of the Manchester by the Sea Police Department. And in 2019, he was appointed as the chief of the Gloucester Police Department. He and his wife Andrea live in Gloucester and have four children, Caitlin, Shannon, Eddie, Alex, and a yellow lab, Hatley. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Chief Edward Connolly. Thanks, Adam. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me to speak at Gloss's 2020 Veterans Day observance. I would also like to acknowledge Gloss's mayor, my boss, Safatia Romeo Taken. Also, of course, Senator Bruce Tarr, Representative Ann Margaret Ferrante, thank you so much for being here. Recognizing the members of the City Council couldn't be here today due to COVID restrictions, I'd like to thank them as well as I'm sure they're tuning in. And especially like to acknowledge Council President Steve LeBlanc, who is also an Army veteran. I have not experienced such a level of support for local veterans outside of Gloucester and Greater Cape, Cape Ann. I'm sure Adam would agree that this, this support is the direct result of the focus energies of our mayor working alongside Senator Tarr and Representative Ann Margaret. And for that, I thank you. And naturally, we also have to recognize Naturally, we also have to recognize Adam and V, the consummate hosts with the most down at the Veterans Affairs Center here in Gloucester. And as a veteran, I thank you both for that. Of course, a special thank you to 1623 Studios for making this accessible for everyone staying safe at home. It's truly humbling to be standing here in Gloucester's historic city hall to say a few words regarding our veterans. Citizens of Gloucester have a long distinguished history of military service. One only need to hear the names of our war dead read aloud every Memorial Day to feel the scale of that sacrifice. But this is Veterans Day, not Memorial Day. So I'd like to talk about those who have served, whether in peacetime or in war, those who are in active duty and those who are in the National Guard or reserves, those who served a few years and those who made a lifelong career. I have found that all veterans possess some type of trait that sets them apart in some unique way. I think I have a sense of what that is, but give me a moment, I'll get back to that. First, I'd like to share with you a story of a personal debt of gratitude that I owe to a Gloucester veteran. A few days ago, Adam asked me to provide a little background info so that he could introduce me. That was the bio that he just provided. It made me sound really old, too. There was a lot of stuff on that, Adam. Anyways, that's the one he just provided, the one that begins in 1987 with me enlisting in the U.S. Army. However, for the years leading up to my enlistment, that outcome was a little less certain. Nothing about my life in 1987 would have made any rational person believe that I was anywhere near a path that would lead me to become a police officer, never mind a police chief. I was a young, self-absorbed punk kid with really poor grades, getting in trouble, and quickly becoming a problem. My saving grace was that I had decided to enlist in the Army upon graduation from high school. My father had been a Marine who served in Vietnam. In fact, he was in Charlestown Navy Yard recovering from shrapnel wounds he received there when he met my mother, and they eventually married, which is always an interesting thought to think that many decades ago, a Vietnamese soldier decided to throw a well-aimed hand grenade at my father 
and here I am. So that was a result of that. My grandfather, who served in war, my grandfather also served in World War II as a Navy sailor. There was never an expectation for us to join the military in my family. I guess I just shared a sense of adventure. And besides, with my grades, college was not going to be an option for me for some time. But as my bio goes, in May of 1987, I left for the Army with a boatload of training and trials ahead of me. Eventually, I arrived at my permanent duty assignment with the 75th Ranger Regiment in Savannah, Georgia. There I, met, I was met by a hard-looking, somewhat intimidating man who would become my platoon sergeant. He was, no sense, he was a no-nonsense, no-excuse, fitness-loving Airborne Ranger. He demanded the absolute best from everyone in his platoon. He trained us hard, and he always led by example. There were days when I wasn't even sure I'd be able to keep up or make it in that unit. We went on difficult deployments together. We certainly fell out of our share of airplanes together. And we went to war together. He taught me to be a ranger, and more, and taught, more importantly, he taught me to see that I was capable of so much more that even I understood at that time. My platoon sergeant had gone to become a great mentor to me, and to this day, I can hear his voice in my head, always pushing me forward. Interestingly enough, my platoon sergeant, sergeant and I had one unique trait in common. We both had a Massachusetts accent, which is rare in a regiment stationed down in Savannah, Georgia. When I asked him where he was from, he told me Gloucester. My memory is my response to that was, where they make the fish sticks? My platoon sergeant, Art McCann, was born and raised here in Gloucester. His dad and his siblings still live here and in the surrounding area. Art and his family live in Georgia now, and, we like, like, and like most, we keep touch via social media. But of course, it wasn't a single person or even a, or an event that I credit for the dramatic positive change I experienced in my military service. The American soldier comes from all walks of life, from every corner and crack of this country and is represented by all races and ethnicities. The nature of, of military service forces its members into close quarters, often in distant lands for long periods of time. You have to learn how to get along and work together, especially during difficult times. My service forced me to understand others, even if they look, sounded, and believed differently from me. How to find common ground and accomplish the mission, always to seek the greater good, despite not always agreeing on how to do that. But my story is not uncommon amongst veterans. I've spoken to many veterans who credit their service with redirecting their lives toward a positive outcome. Their experience of selflessness, of being part of something bigger than an individual, and their ability to suffer through difficult moments with others had a profound impact on who they became and who they are. Perhaps these are the values that make our veterans stand out in our society. And maybe now more than ever, we can all learn from their example. We can learn how to meet adversity together and not let it polarize us. We can engage people in ideas that are not like our own. We can all disagree but still accomplish the mission without compromising our integrity. I love irony, and it is ironic that it was, an, it was the efforts of a platoon sergeant from Gloucester that has led me to become the chief of the Gloucester Police Department and to be standing before you here today. For that, I do owe a special debt of gratitude to Art McCann and this city that I now call home. Before closing, I would like to acknowledge the passing of Austin Dorr. Austin was a great American and a legendary Korean War veteran. He was awarded our nation's second highest military honor, the Silver Star. But more importantly, he was a friend of Gloucester's veterans and someone I always enjoy talking to. And someone in different circumstances would be standing or sitting right out there with his homemade cane shaking it at me right now. And he will truly be missed by this community. Stay safe. Thank you. Chief, we are so lucky to have you 
leading the, the, the great men and women of our Gloucester Police Departments. Um, we are so grateful to have you and Andrea and your family as part of our Gloucester family. Uh, from the moment um, I think we sat down at Fiesta uh, when we first had a chance to really chat, I knew uh, both of you would be so wonderful as part of our Gloucester family. And to show a small token of our appreciation, we have a small flag that will hang at the boulevard uh, for you as a thank you. And so our community uh, continues not only to appreciate your military service, but your continued service to our community and to our nation. Thank you, Chief. Thank you so much, Adam. This is a great honor, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have a musical salute to the armed forces. We'd now like to take a moment to thank and remember all those who served in the Merchant Marines during World War II. To those serving in the National Guard and Reserves and active duties, thank you for your service. I would like to recognize the families of the men and women who are now serving in the United States military. Thank you for your service. We understand it is never easy to have a loved one in the service and away from home, especially during these unprecedented times. But know that you have the support of our community, the men and women who protect our freedom and their families are of the utmost importance to us. Know that the Office of Veterans Services 
is always available to assist you, and that the citizens of our great city thank you. More than 82,000 Americans remain missing in action from World War II until present. Each day, remains are found on battlefields in Europe, the Indo-Pacific, Korea, and places across the globe. Their remains are returned home, and families are finally able to have a bit of closure, knowing that they may finally lay their loved ones to rest. Until each and every last American listed as missing in action is returned home, I would please ask that you join me in a moment of silence as we remember those 82,000 Americans still listed as missing in action. Jim Dalpiaz will now play Taps. I'd like to thank 1623 Studios for their continued commitment in helping us share our message to the veterans community. Especially during these difficult times, your support is especially helpful and appreciated. I would like to express my gratitude to all those who took part in today's ceremony. And those watching today's ceremony and thank our entire community, who in any other year would have been here to celebrate along with us. However unusual this year has been, it has not been without the continued support of volunteers who will be removing over 6,000 American flags from the graves of our cemeteries. To those who assisted to ensure we continue our mission to share our Veterans Day ceremony and its importance with our school children through technology. Thank you. Chaplain Paul Kruger will now offer the benediction. Today we remembered all those who have come before us. Let us never forget their sacrifices in protecting our democracy, that most honorable attribute of this great country. Our veterans have ensured the sanctity of the words enshrined in our Constitution, we the people. We honor their service and sacrifice today. May our children learn to honor it as well. Let us remember their honorable service and the burden of their sacrifice. It is right and just to honor our veterans. We should encourage our youth to walk in their path of duty, and we should never forget the cost. To our Creator God, 
We pray, please embrace our veterans, give them perpetual care, and help us to keep them in our hearts forever. Amen. Welcome home to all of you who are home on leave or recently discharged from the service. Thank you for your service. From the deepest part of my heart, I apologize to all our veterans and to our community who so avidly participate and volunteer with us to celebrate Veterans Day. We look forward to the days when we are all together again coming together as a community to celebrate our veterans is something that is irreplaceable and is something we long to return to, all of us, together. This concludes today's Veterans Day and Armistice Day ceremony. God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. <laughs>